happy holidays! Thanks for stopping by. Wasn't really expecting you today, though. I've been busy trying to find gifts for my friends and family, but it's not going very well. Aww. If only there was some kind of curated list that I could use to make this process easier. Has anyone ever thought of that before? Oprah Winfrey is a media icon best known for her eponymously named daytime TV show, The Oprah Winfrey Show. Running for a groundbreaking 25 seasons between the years 1986 and 2011, it delved into a variety of topics ranging from self-help to celebrity interviews. The Oprah Winfrey Show was mega popular and was consistently ranked the number one daytime talk show throughout its entire run. But there was one episode that was more anticipated than anything else, one of the biggest TV events of the year. Oprah's. Favorite. Remembered mostly for being a lavish giveaway featuring fanatical audience members, over the course of a decade, Oprah's favorite things became a cultural phenomenon that was big enough to have real economic implications. Is it a heartwarming Christmas special? Or American materialism at its worst? Or maybe somehow both? Let's talk about it. Shh. They have no idea what's coming. Our story begins in the year 1986 with a pair of pajamas. Specifically with a pair of Karen Newberger pajamas that Oprah was in love with. You could say it was her original favorite thing. She was so enamored by them that she decided to give her entire staff a pair for the holidays. Oprah went even further and gave a pair to every single one of her audience members during taping of one of their episodes. The audience went wild. They loved it. The people at home loved it. You have on the Karen Newberger pajamas. You got your Bugs Bunny slippers. You get a bowl of sugar smack. You get yourself in the bed and you are having yourself a fine time. It was great content. Before this, audience giveaways weren't really a thing, so the audience for Oprah was thrilled to receive anything. The producers realized that they were onto something, and over the next year, they compiled a list of Oprah's favorite things and unveiled it during an episode that premiered the following year. The idea was that every product on this list would be something that Oprah uses and endorses. Confusingly though, Oprah's favorite things refers to two different but related things. First is the Christmas list that Oprah publishes every November, and second is the name of the annual TV special. Oprah's favorite things, the list, still comes out every year, it never ended, there's a 2023 list online, it's still as big as ever. Oprah's favorite things, the TV special, ended in 2010. This video will predominantly be about the TV special because that's the fun part. But let me tell you one more thing about Oprah before we get started. She has her content on lockdown. Oprah is very intentional about what clips get to be on the internet. There are over 4,500 episodes of The Oprah Winfrey Show and maybe a few dozen available online through streaming services, and most of the episodes online are from the later seasons. The result of this is that it makes it surprisingly difficult to find information about the holiday shows, particularly the shows from the earlier years. I know there was giveaway episodes between 1997 and 2000, but I don't know anything about them. I can't even tell you what was on the list those years. I have a few clips from a compilation that was posted on Oprah's YouTube channel, but that's pretty much it. And because of that, we are going to narrow this video down even further to talk about the period between 2002 and 2010. There was no favorite things in 2001 because of other things that had happened. So we're going to be focusing on the period between 2002 and 2010, which was when the show was known as Oprah's ultimate favorite things. When most people think of the Oprah's Favorite Things giveaway, this is the time period they are thinking of. It's also the show's most documented era. How did somebody score an elusive ticket to Oprah's Favorite Things? There were no lines, there was no camping out. All tickets to the Oprah Winfrey Show were free, including tickets to the holiday show. However, tickets were super competitive and notoriously difficult to get. Fans would have to submit an entire application for a ticket for the show, 
and then those tickets would be distributed using a lottery system. The audience did not get to choose the date of the show they were attending, nor did they know the topic of the show beforehand. So a big part of the surprise for the audience was that they were going to be on the Favorite Things show in the first place. It could have just been a regular episode. You didn't know. I liked the way Oprah handled her tickets. During the show, Oprah would reveal items from her Favorite Things list one by one, and every member of the audience goes home with one of each item featured on the list. I want to thank Tracy Egan Morrissey. She wrote an article on Jezebel breaking down the price of every item featured on the show between this time period, and it was super helpful. I don't think I would have had the patience to track down these prices by myself. So without her, this video would have been worse. The year was 2002. I looked like this. Kelly Clarkson had just won the first season of American Idol. Halle Berry became the first black woman to win an Oscar for Best Actress. And Dick Cheney was acting president for a whole two and a half hours while George W. Bush had surgery. Acting president for two and a half hours? Don't you mean eight years? <laughs> Gotta throw in a Dick Cheney joke. And those are the only three things that happened in 2002. The Oprah's Favorite Things special did not begin as the mammoth display of consumerism that it would become. Audience members this year went home with 26 items with a collective value of $2,361. The most expensive item was a four-in-one camera priced at $450. And I don't know what this means. I don't know what the four features are. If you know what the four features of a 2002 camera, tell me. Other notable items from this list include a J.Lo sweatsuit, another pair of Karen Newberger pajamas, Everyday Grace by Marianne Williamson, and a Samsung flip phone. The following year was a little bit more expensive. Audience members went home with 21 items with a collective value of $4,356. The most expensive item was a Sony Handycam priced at $1,000. Other items on this list include a Blackberry and Ugg boots. Did you know that Oprah is like largely credited for bringing Ugg boots to America? I have Ugg boots. I've been influenced. When Oprah announced to the audience that this was the favorite things episode, a woman in the audience got so worked up that she almost fainted and Oprah had to go make sure she was okay. I could see that our lady in pink was about to go over the edge. <laughs> Literally, I thought she was going to pass out. It is my opinion that 2003 was the end of the purest era of Oprah's favorite things, the TV special. The list was full of desserts, sweaters, candles, maybe an electronic or two. But by 2004, companies had caught on that getting your product on the Oprah's favorite thing list was basically like winning the corporate lottery. Giving away a few hundred products to the Oprah Winfrey show was nothing compared to the massive amount of profit they could expect in the weeks following the airing of the show. Like at this point, she's even giving away gift cards. Oprah is powerful enough to get any item that she wants and businesses are begging to be featured on her show. And the result of this is that Oprah was able to give away monstrously large prize packages to her audience. To quell some of the earlier critics who found the show distasteful from the very beginning, in 2004, Oprah chose to present her favorite things list to an audience made up of teachers from all 50 states. I love teachers! Audience members went home with 21 items with a collective value of $14,332. That's $10,000 more than the previous year. It's a lot. The most expensive item was a 30-inch Dell TV priced at $2,299. TVs used to be like super expensive. Other gift highlights include apple bottom jeans by Nelly, a $500 Office Max gift certificate, and a Maytag washer dryer system. 2004 was the most expensive year for favorite things until the final favorite things episode in 2010. It was a little excessive. This massive giveaway turned some heads with many criticizing the superfluous nature of many of the items like champagne glasses, gourmet key lime pie, and William Sonoma home bedding priced at $1,100. Sure, she was giving away stuff to teachers, but do teachers need apple bottom jeans and boots with the fur? Got the whole club looking at her. 
2004 was also the year that Maya Rudolph parodied the show on Saturday Night Live. Nobody does turkeys like Green Hour Smoked Turkey! <laughs> And that's not even a joke. Oprah really gave away a turkey as one of her favorite things in 2003. The Oprah show toned things down considerably in 2005. This year's audience was made up of volunteers who assisted in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. This is a really quick turnaround. Hurricane Katrina happened in late August 2005, and by November, Oprah had these people in Chicago in her studio ready for favorite things. Her team works fast. Audience members went home with 18 items with a collective value of $7,372. This is obviously a lot of money, but it was still 50% less than the total cost of last year's giveaway. The most expensive item given away this year was a Philip Stein Tesla diamond watch priced at $3,800. I don't know what it is about Oprah and these watches, but she gives these watches away three different times in this time period. Other items on this list include an iPod, a Blackberry phone, and lovely perfume by Sarah Jessica Parker. Back in the olden days, you used to have to have a separate device for music and phone. Crazy. In 2006, Oprah did not have a favorite things. She cited several reasons, including negative reactions to the show and some nonsense about businesses falsely claiming to be on the list. Instead, Oprah gave each member of an audience a Sony Handycam and $1,000 cash and told them to go use it to spread goodwill and document it for the show. There's an entire article on the Oprah Winfrey website that lists some of the things that people did with this, and I'm gonna share some of my favorites because they are very nice. The people who participated described the experience as exhilarating, and many went above and beyond this challenge and said that it inspired them to continue to give back and volunteer more regularly. I'll link the article in the description, it's very nice. People criticized Oprah for years for these giveaways, and suddenly she does the complete opposite and way less people watch it. It was a very heartwarming episode, but nowhere near as exciting as the usual Oprah's favorite things list. So at 2007, Oprah was back. Oprah episodes were typically shot in Harpo Studios in Chicago, Illinois, but for this special episode, Oprah filmed in Macon, Georgia. Macon like bacon. I had to write Macon like bacon a bunch in the script because I want to pronounce it like Macron, the French president. Macron. Oprah chose Macon because it was the American city with the highest density of Oprah viewers. Audience members went home with 18 items with a collective value of $7,880. The most expensive item was an LG HD TV priced at $3,800. Some other highlights include a KitchenAid artisan mixer and Josh Groban's Noel CD. But then in 2008, something happened. Now it's official, we are in a recession. The United States was thrust into the worst economic crisis in decades, and suddenly watching a bunch of strangers receive free stuff on TV was not as exciting as it once was. So Oprah mixed it up in 2008. First, this episode took place in summer rather than the normal November holiday slot. Oprah promised that this year's installment would be recession friendly. And that's no fun. That's like no fun at all. Audience members went home with seven items with a grand total of $702. The most expensive item was a normal Kamali suit priced at $350. Unsurprisingly, this episode was not a huge hit. And in 2009, Oprah didn't bother having a favorite things episode at all. But the next year was 2010. The economy was recovering. I personally was reaching peak levels of middle school angst. And the Oprah Winfrey show was coming to an end the following spring. Now, the Oprah Winfrey show did not end because ratings were dropping or Oprah's influence was fading. If anything, Oprah was at the top of her game. But Oprah wanted to end the show on her own terms and made the decision to stop the show at the end of her 25th season. I really respect ending something on a nice, clean number. I approve. Anyways, 
This means that the November 2010 episode would be the final Favorite Things special. And no one could stop Oprah from making this the biggest, the boldest Favorite Things ever. Because Oprah knew this was going to be her last season, she did some things she had never done before. Like she created an entire behind the scenes reality show that documented the creation of every episode in season 25. During the behind the scenes episode for the Favorite Things special, we learn a little bit more about how the list comes to be. That is right there for sure. Okay. These are right here for sure. Okay. It's like Christmas morning, but not for myself. It's like getting to experience Christmas morning through the eyes of everybody else who's going to receive all these wonderful gifts. You know how mad it made me that like this episode is available online, but none of the like actual favorite things episodes are? You can get an episode about favorite things, but you can't get favorite things. Throughout the years, staff members will take notes about different items that Oprah likes and is using. In early fall, they will present a selection of these items back to her and slowly whittle this down into the final list. The big conflict in this episode is that Oprah wants to give away iPads to her audience. Apple is one of the only companies big enough to say no to Oprah. And they initially do. They say no to Oprah. I would just say the iPad has revolutionized everything that I do. It changed the way I operate. It changed the way I watch the news. It changed uh, information and how I received it. It changed the way I communicate. It changed, you know, now I, I take notes on it. I send email through it. I do everything on it. I think it's the greatest invention of this, well, we only went 11 years into this century. So, so far, best one. But you don't want to have beef with Oprah. So, they ended up changing their mind and Oprah was able to secure 300 iPads for her audience. Since that really is the most favorite of the favorite things I've ever had as a favorite favorite, it was very important to me to have the iPad as a favorite thing. And this was when iPads first came out. It was like, it was so hard to get an iPad. So it's crazy that Oprah made this deal. There are two other things I wanna note about this episode. One, Oprah has a hairstylist named Andre Walker who worked with her for all 25 seasons of the show. She surprises him by um, telling him that she's going to include his new shampoo line on Oprah's favorite things. But when I looked up his name, I saw that he was the same Andre Walker who created the hair classification system, like 1A to 4C. Like the curly hair chart. He made that. I guess I thought it was a lot older than that. I didn't know it could be attributed to a single man back in the 90s. And two, there's a B plot in this Christmas episode. There's a B plot about Oprah's team trying to get Mark Furman to do an interview on the show. In case you don't know who that is, Mark Furman was an LAPD officer who was the key witness for the prosecution in the OJ Simpson trial. During the trial, he was exposed for saying, um, numerous racial slurs, which may or may not have derailed the trial, costing the prosecution their conviction. He feels responsible more for the case getting thrown off track because it became about race instead of the facts. Yeah. He is responsible for that. So Oprah wants to interview him. And despite reservations about the show from Oprah's staff and even Mark Furman himself, Oprah nails this interview. Would you want to sit down and talk to him? Oh, yeah. And what would you want to say to him? I know you didn't mean to kill two people and you didn't go there for that and it wasn't a first degree murder. Oh. She nails the interview. She's so good at interviewing. Release more of your tapes, Oprah. In 2010, Oprah had not one, but two holiday specials. Day one, audience members went home with 23 items with a collective value of $12,648. I want to note that this is still less than the prize value of 2004. The most expensive item was a Sony 52-inch 3D TV and Blu-ray player priced at $3,600. Other highlights include A Course in Weight Loss, Spiritual Lessons for Surrendering Your Weight Forever by Marianne Williamson. It's like Oprah loves her. Oprah loves Marianne, a five-year subscription to Netflix, and a seven-day Royal Caribbean cruise, including the airfare to get there. And day two is even bigger than day one. Day two audience members went home with 20 items with a collective value of $27,602. <laughs> Thank you.
Most of that comes from the most expensive item, which was a 2012 Volkswagen Beetle priced at $22,000. This blew everybody's mind and is arguably what the Oprah's favorite thing special is most known for. It's the thing where everybody got a car. She gave everybody a car. A local news station in Iowa profiled a resident who was an audience member of one of the favorite things episodes in 2010. <laughs> Well, a Norwalk nurse was lucky enough to be part of the show that aired today. You know, it was taped earlier. I'm still like in total shock. It was like winning the lottery. You want to see what I got? Yes, I do. Oh, the very first thing we got, the first gift that she had come down, was a new iPad. $500 gift certificate to Nordstrom's for lingerie. And you can only use it for lingerie. Yeah, oh, no. how fun is that? A $1,000 earring. Are they great? No. <laughs> I'm a nurse. <laughs> Jones also told of being diagnosed with breast cancer. It's been, you know, like an up and down year for me, but this is like a great ending to my year. And I know this was a big deal in her community. I just know it. Very Midwestern for this to be a news story. Earlier this year, a TikToker named Candy, who goes by the handle at Always Candid, um, made a series of posts about her experience being on the Favorite Things episode in 2010. She still has most of the items from that day, including the bright red Volkswagen Beetle that she says she'll drive until it breaks down. Don't be alarmed, my mochi got a haircut yesterday. It takes him a few days to refluff. Where were we? Oprah was an influencer before they were influencers. And honestly, calling Oprah an influencer seems like a little bit of an understatement. She's one of the most powerful women in the world. An Oprah endorsement is so powerful that people have named and studied the phenomenon. Oprah's influence is more widespread than you realize and goes far beyond just a holiday shopping list. She's responsible for launching the careers of Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz, Rachel Ray, to name a few. Her endorsement of Barack Obama during the 2008 Democratic primary was such a huge event that it is now one of the most studied aspects of the 2008 Obama campaign. Oprah may or may not be responsible for getting Obama elected. Think about that. In 1997, Oprah was sued by a group of beef executives after she commented that mad cow disease had made her weary of ever eating beef again, which in turn caused beef sales to drop. The beef execs claimed they lost an estimated $10 million, but the jury did rule in Oprah's favor. After the ruling, Oprah said, free speech not only lives, it rocks. So for a brand, being featured on Oprah's Favorite Things is monumental. But there's no single way to get your product featured on the Oprah's Favorite Things list. There's no sort of application that businesses fill out. The Oprah site put out another article this year about the process of creating the 2020, 2023 list. Yeah, that made sense. Because it's no longer a giveaway, the size of the list has really ballooned in the past few years. There are now over 100 items on this list in several different categories. And instead of surprising audience members, she now surprises small business owners on Zoom calls, informing them that their items are going to be featured on her list. While not every item is hand-selected by Oprah, she does say that she endorses them all and has tested them all in person. Unsurprisingly, there have been a few businesses that have lied about being featured on Oprah's favorite things list as like an advertising tactic. There's not a lot of information about these businesses because if you mess with Oprah, you get stuck into the center of the earth and everybody forgets about your existence. So even today, Oprah's favorite things still has a large impact on holiday shopping trends. Her list is so popular that people publish lists about her list. I was gonna name some notable 20, 23 items on my list, but no free clout, not even for Oprah. This may come as a shock for some of you, but like, every other successful black woman ever, Oprah has some haters. But this doesn't mean there aren't more legitimate criticisms of Oprah's favorite things. So we're gonna focus on those. Not everyone was too keen on watching a group of strangers cry and faint and pass out over receiving a few luxury goods that nobody really needed. Many thought it was in bad taste to have such overwhelming reactions to receiving material items. We literally have medics standing by because it looks like a couple of y'all might need a medic or two. Put some spooky music over the footage and it becomes downright dystopian. Okay. Okay. <laughs> With 
every iteration of the Oprah's Favorite Things list comes a new wave of op-eds and think pieces about the implications of it all. One of my favorite quotes was from a 2010 Entertainment Weekly article that asks about the audience. Would they scream and cry in Saturday Night Live parody proportions if she brought about peace in the Middle East? I'd scream, I'd cry, I'd be so happy. It's very easy to make fun of a group of impassioned, mostly women hugging each other about receiving a toaster. While I agree the audience's reaction can be a bit much, I also want to defend them a little and say that this whole thing has been orchestrated by the producers to make the audience have as big of a reaction as possible. They did not have to do these elaborate reveals. Oprah and the show's producers were very aware that a large part of the show's draw was the fanatical audience reactions. The more substantive criticism of Oprah's favorite things is that she's giving away thousands of dollars in products that people don't really need. The items featured on Oprah's favorite things list typically weren't everyday necessities, but instead high-end luxurious products that were out of most people's price range. We went over the list, you remember. She's giving away Ugg boots and iPods. She's not paying off people's medical debt. The 2000s was marked by a significant rise in consumerism before the Great Recession. That's why I'm so mad in this picture. The economy. How could this happen? The early 2000s were a time of conspicuous consumption, where it was very normal to buy things just because you could. I think that Oprah's favorite things, the TV special, fits right in with other shows of the time like MTV's Cribs, My Super Sweet 16, and even Extreme Makeover Home Edition. It was an era of excess and consumer indulgence, and this show was definitely a part of that. The episodes that aired in the 2000s were an event, a spectacle featuring the newest, shiniest goods that were given to every single audience member, whether they had any interest in them or not. Oprah's favorite things, the TV special, was a holiday celebration that is essentially centered around the joy of being a consumer. Oh, you feel bad? Have you tried buying something? Look how joyous and happy these people are. Not a care in the world. And all because they have an Amazon Kindle. If you don't have an Amazon Kindle, well that's okay because here's a $50 coupon code. That's right everybody. Today's video has been sponsored by Jeff Bezos himself. Use code MYBUTT at checkout to receive 15% off your copy of Das Kapital. As I was going through the process of making this, I started to get a lot of Oprah clips in my YouTube recommendations, and I started watching them. Every time I watch Oprah do an interview, wow. Anyways, I was watching this episode from 2007 about a woman who had a severe shopping addiction and had managed to hide $50,000 in credit card debt from her husband. Susie Orman's also in this episode because she's the finance lady. She says to the woman, You are just simply trying to find yourself. You are trying to define yourself by the things that you buy rather than you define the things around you. And you keep buying new and new things because you can't find the definition of yourself. And Oprah says, But it seems to me as you've lived a completely external life, that you're completely disconnected from who you really are. You just, you just sort of living outside yourself. If you know anything about Oprah, this is not a surprising take. She's a very spiritual person and would probably agree that materialism leads to nothing but emptiness and dissatisfaction. I know nobody is forcing anybody to spend recklessly, but advertisements are everywhere. Everybody wants your money, except me. And what is the Oprah's favorite thing special if not an hour-long advertisement that makes us associate the warm, fuzzy feelings of holiday giving with an Amazon Kindle. Another criticism of the show concerns the specific items that Oprah chooses to give away. From the same Entertainment Weekly article, she's not feeding the homeless, she's not rebuilding a disaster-torn town, she's not even giving away college vacations or homes people can live in. She's giving away limited edition Philip Stein watches named in her honor. When people saw an audience filled with teachers or Hurricane Katrina volunteers, they couldn't help but to wonder if the money could have been used in more meaningful ways. I think the solution to this criticism would have been to give the audience the cash equivalent of the products for things that they didn't want, because I'm sure not everybody liked all of the items that were featured on the list. And maybe some people would rather pay off medical bills than receive a $2,400 watch. But in her defense, just because other issues exist, 
doesn't mean that Oprah can't give away some expensive items to her audience. Overall, I think criticisms of the list contents are pretty weak. Oprah has a net worth of $2.5 billion. Of course, the items she likes are going to be expensive. The cost of an item is meaningless to her. But like, it's Oprah's favorite things. It's not Oprah's list of reasonably priced home essentials. Also, Oprah does a lot of charity work externally to Oprah's favorite things. She has an entire charitable foundation in her name. These episodes are not her charity work. It's just a fun thing that Oprah likes to do because I think she genuinely enjoys giving people gifts. I'm spending a lot of time defending billionaires, and I don't even think billionaires should exist. Lainey, how could you say that? Would you say that if you had a billion dollars? Joke's on you. I'll never have a billion dollars. One more criticism that I will cover. It's an open secret that Oprah did not pay for any of the items given to her audience. All items were donated by the company, which means that the donation is essentially the advertising fee for being on the show. Oprah says she does it like this to keep things fair for all of the companies involved. This is why they were struggling to get the iPads in the 2010 episode. It's not that Oprah couldn't afford to give her audience iPads, it's that Apple didn't want to give away like hundreds of iPads for free but Oprah convinced them to do it. And I've always thought this criticism is a little bit unfair because while Oprah is not paying for these items um, with money, she is paying for them with exposure. And I know that's controversial to say, like exposure doesn't pay the bills. Well, yeah, yeah, I agree with that, but the one exception is Oprah. For uh, having Oprah do exposure for you will pay the bills. And it has, <laughs> for a lot of people. Nobody was losing money being on this show. It was always a plus for the product. Oprah's favorite things began as a small giveaway that eventually ballooned into a media phenomenon with serious economic implications. Do I know Oprah? Yes, I do actually. I'm just kidding, of course I don't know Oprah. But she does seem lovely and I do believe that the reason she does this is because she likes giving away things to people and making them happy. Occasionally I'd see a comment on a video or post where someone claimed to have been at one of the shows. Most of these posts are very sweet, they're filled with people thanking Oprah and telling her that it was one of the best days of their entire lives. And I think that's important to remember as well. Ultimately, Oprah's star power is both a blessing and a curse. It was due to her massive influence that she was able to secure such lucrative product deals, but also why it drew so much negative attention. Are the audience reactions a little bit cringe? Yes. Is it a little concerning how much the episode relates material consumption with the ideas of happiness, acceptance, and love? Yes. I actually think the Oprah's Favorite Things TV specials get better with age. When the episodes originally aired, they were essentially a shopping list or an advertisement, as I've said many, many times. But now, like 15, 20 years later, we're far enough removed from it that it's almost like a little time capsule. It reminded me just how far technology has come over the past 20 years. It's cute seeing people get this excited for a flip phone, but we should also remember that the special contributes to a culture of constant consumption. Isn't that fun? One that equates feelings of Christmas joy and happiness with the ability to buy some luxury items on a list inadvertently or not. At the end of the day, everything is an ad, except for this video. We may live in a consumer's hellscape, and maybe the Oprah's favorite thing special was just a very pretty advertisement, but at least it made us feel the Christmas spirit, right? And that's gotta mean something. And we made it. I've been filming for like two hours. Oh, <sighs> Happy holidays. Please subscribe.